Sometimes you need to expand the worksheet by adding new data. In this particular worksheet called Insert Delete, maybe we've decided to add a new column for the employee ID. We want a new column to the left of the building column or to the right of the employee name column, however you might say it. In Excel, when we add columns, we use a feature called Insert. And when we insert a column, it will appear to the left of a selected column. So let's click column B first. One way to get to this feature is using the Home tab in the ribbon, the Cells group, Insert, Sheet, Columns. A new column appears to the left. All the other data gets moved to the right. So eventually we'll put in Employee ID and then add that data at a later time, let's say. So we can easily add a column. At some point, we might want to take out a column. Maybe we decided that we really don't need the benefits column in this particular data. So we'll simply go to column G. Now, now another approach to working with columns and rows is to use the right mouse button and simply click on the column in question. If we did want to insert a column, we choose insert, but the opposite of that is delete. So when we talk about adding and removing columns and rows, we use the terms insert and delete. So we're about to delete column G. It's gone and the data to the right moves leftward. There certainly are going to be times when we want to add rows. If you're working with a database list, it's not uncommon to add information at the bottom, but sometimes you might want to insert it from within. Now, what if we want to put in uh, John Ashton here? and we want to put it in an alphabetical order, so it's going to go above row five. When we insert a row, it will appear above the current selected row. And here too, we might right click and choose insert. Notice that it doesn't say row or column, but by implication, since we've selected an entire row here, we will insert a new row. Now, on second thought, was that a good idea? In this particular worksheet, there happens to be other data off to the right. And I think you'd see pretty readily that wasn't such a great idea, was it? We don't want that other data to be broken up the way we've done this here. So let's press Control Z to undo this. Now, what if it is the case that we truly want to add a record here? Instead of inserting a row, we can insert cells. So let's highlight the data here. And now, right-clicking within the selected data, we can choose Insert, but this time we're going to shift the cells down, meaning all the cells from row five downward. This will only occur in columns A through H, so it will have no effect on the data to the right. We click OK, we shift the cells down, and then maybe we're going to add this name, John Ashton here. And I won't fill in the other data, but at some point we'll take care of that too. And in this case, by inserting the cells, we have not altered or affected the data to the right at all. Another concern you have when you insert cells or insert rows or columns is the effect that it might have on formulas. There are formulas here in row seven for this data. It refers to the data in rows two through six. We're adding up the data there. If we insert cells above this, because we wanna push the data down, then we could certainly move it as well. But if we insert cells now, we've selected these, right-click to insert, or possibly from the ribbon, insert cells, shift these cells down, click OK. And our formulas that had referred to rows two through six now refer to rows three through seven. So as a general rule, you can feel comfortable when you insert and delete rows and columns and cells. Excel makes the adjustment to the formulas. If at a later time, maybe it's too late to do an undo, you change your mind, and again, you could possibly move these, but if we delete these cells, as you would expect, we can push these cells upward. So right-click, delete, shift the cells up, click OK, and now the formulas readjust again to refer to rows two through six. So it's a very easy capability to insert rows and columns. There could be cases, too, when you need to insert two or more rows or two or more columns at the same time. Maybe we're going to be adding some more information here regarding phone numbers, social security numbers. Maybe we want to put in two new columns. If we drag across two columns here, right click and insert, we're going to see two new columns to the left of column D. Or in other words, the department data is gonna be shifted two columns to the right. And now we've got our two new columns this way. And similarly, maybe we change our minds later, we haven't added the data, 
If we wish to get rid of two columns at once, we could certainly drag across these two cells here, right click and then delete and those two columns disappear. So think of this as a feature that's easy to use. Here and there, you might make a, a slip up and delete the wrong row or the wrong column. You can easily use Control Z to escape or to undo your action. So it's a feature you need to use from time to time as you readjust the display of a particular worksheet.